Hi everyone, I'm here to read your bedtime story tonight and tonight I'm going to read The King of Tiny Things and this is by the author of the same book who writes The Bog Baby, Jean Willis. This is one of year one's favourite stories. One summer, when we were small, we went to stay with Nana and Grandad. There was a tent in Grandad's shed. We could camp under the stars, he said. It seemed like a brilliant idea, up until bedtime. We'd only ever slept indoors with the light on. Night, night, sleep tight, they said. We didn't. It was too dark. I shone my torch bright. Don't, said Chrissy. Creepy crawlies will come out and get us. There was a fuzzy shadow. Something moth-like crept through the flap in the tent. Chrissy screamed. She swatted it on its back. But it wasn't a bug. It was a boy, no bigger than a beetle. He looked in the eye and he sang his lullaby. I am the king of tiny things who creep and crawl or fuzz their wings. Mine is the magic that nighttime for it brings. Follow me, follow me, follow me. He led us up the garden path and disappeared under the shed. We looked and there he was, oiling her slug who'd lost its slime. Ugh, oh, said Chrissy. How can you care for creepy crawlies? How can you not? he cried. They turn the soil so seeds can sow, they visit plants so crops can grow. We need them more than you could know. Follow me, follow me. So when the king of tiny things found a worm drying on the path, we carried it to the compost heap to recover. When he found a caterpillar trapped under a pot, we set it free. And then, when we found a daddy long legs missing a leg, we even made him a new one. The king showed us many marvellous moonlit things. Weevils with copper wings, chubby grubs, badger cubs, baby bats in fairy hats. But best of all, he showed us that even in the shadows, the night was bright with magic when he sang, follow me, follow me, follow me. We didn't follow him straight away. We were too busy being brave, but we should have. His boat had sunk and we fished him out of the pond. If his heart was beating, I couldn't feel it. It was smaller than an apple pit. Stop, said Chrissy. He's no bigger than a beetle. We need to nurse him the creepy crawly way. She found a reed, no wider than a whisker, and put it to his lips. I'll give him little puff, she said. You pinch his nose. I pinched and she puffed. She pinched and I puffed. And he spluttered and spat and sat up and looked. Very pleased to be back alive. As we tucked him into bed, he gave a shiver and he said, For the love of tiny things, will you be my creepy crawly queens? Yes, we said. But you must rest now, little man. Night, night. Sleep tight. We woke early. We went to say goodbye to him before Dad came to fetch us. Chrissy got there first. She was kneeling by his bed with her head in her hands. All of that was left of him was his lovely crown, his cloak and his crumpled skin. Fetch a matchbox, she cried, and a trowel. We buried the matchbox under a marigold, but as we turned to leave, Something flew down and landed on my hand. At first I thought it was a beetle, but it wasn't. It was the king of tiny things. A bigger, bolder, brighter. As if he'd shed his skin to get his new grown-up wings. And by the moon and the stars, he smiled and he sang. Follow me, follow me, follow me. 
and on those magical summer nights when we stayed with Nana and Grandad, that's just what we did. Beep.